This is just going to be a short video on how to check your motor. I see a lot of people posting that their ride, house, whatever, doesn't work, but it worked last year, it worked yesterday, and when they plug it into a triple head adapter, the other components get dim or don't work at all. So this is a very common failure on this style piece, the Roundup, the Ghost Around, and whatever the Christmas one is that I can never get the name on. But... You notice no power. Now, the reason I keep turning it back off is I don't want to burn up my power port uh, plugged into the wall. So, take 90% of them are rotating. When they fail, it has rotating mass of some sort. Whether it be a base where it has the rotating ring, or the roundup ghost round where it has the rotating drum, uh, or even uh, Greaves Manor where it has the rotating ghost. You can take the top off and manipulate the ghost as an example. If it has something that spins, moves, um, uh, the Skull Tower, which they have a Christmas one too, you can rotate the ring uh, where the people go around. And if you have no power and you want to check to see if it's your motor, the easiest way of doing it without tearing it apart and unplugging it is turn it on and then help it. You hear the speaker? That's because I'm overpowering the short. See, it's trying to go because I just overpowered the short. But it's spinning slowly because the motor is bad. It's shorted out. And if I could spin it at full speed, you can see the lights are starting to flicker. If I could spin it at full speed... Oh, well, you can see the lights are flickering. Okay, the motor just went to full short again. Uh, that is the fastest way to check if it's a motor. I know a lot of people say, no, it's going to be a power supply or it's going to be your off-on switch. It is the motor. The pancake motors that are in these things fill with the grease, the lubricant. Uh, like this one, because this is what I use as an example verbally without actually showing it to you. This one's put in the box this way, and then you stick it into the big box, the cart, or put, put it in the foam this way. Then you stick it into your cardboard like this. Generally, it sits like this or like this in the cardboard, where the motor that's in the arm and the motor that is in the lift are either on the top or the bottom. When this gets warm, the grease, the lubricant, runs down either into this motor, which spins it, which is right here, and it shorts out, or if it's put away this way, it runs into this motor and shorts it out so it can't lift. And what happens is it just doesn't work. That's why on all the Facebook pages I'll tell people to turn it on, try and rotate it. Don't don't force it hard, just give it a little help and see if the lights come back or if the speaker starts making noise. Now, in some cases, it'll start to work perfectly because you've dislodged the shorted piece of grease or lubricant just for a moment. It'll usually fail within a few minutes. Because uh, that lubricant has gotten back into the windings and creates a dead short. In electricity, and like in most things in life, least path of resistance. A shorted motor has less resistance than all the components in here. The lights, everything. So electricity comes in and says, hey, look, it's an easy way to get back to our original source. And if you leave something like this plugged in and on, now this is trying to reset itself, which is why when I move it, sometimes the lights flashes. It's trying to get back to that neutral position. Uh, it can cause your heads to get hot and burn out. And in rare instances, they can catch fire. Rare. Like, so rare that you'd have a better chance of winning the lottery. So, but that is the best way I can show you, since this is the piece I'm be working on, how to test a motor without dismantling your product. Now... The other way to test it is once you dismantle it, you can find the wires to the motor. Most are plugged in with a Molex connector. Some, they're soldered to the board and you have to cut one of the two wires, red or black. And as soon as you do that, and if you turn it on, if it starts to work, lights and uh, sound, not necessarily motion unless it's got multiple motors like this does, it has two, um, then you're guaranteed it's a motor. What's wrong with this one is 
because I can spin it and make it turn, it's the motor that's here, which is the hardest one to get to, not the motor that's here that lifts it. Um, that's another way to check. Now, if yours is spinning and then shorts out, you can actually start lifting it while it's on. And if that motor is shorted, it'll actually start working. Now, the problem with lifting it is as soon as that happens, this is going to start to spin. So lift it from the center hub. Of course, I'm not forcing it. I'm just taking up the slack that's in it because it's not on. I don't want to break it. It's already bad. I don't want to make it worse. So any animated piece that all of a sudden stops and gives you a power draw if you have it on a three head adapter and you checked your cord to make sure that it didn't die 90 some odd percent probably 94 95 percent it's going to be the motor the other five percent is sometimes an led it's happened twice will short out and burn out the entire unit and you have to replace that led that is super rare other times the circuit board goes bad which real racing is becoming more and more common so but that is the fastest way to test your piece to see if the problem with it is a motor or something else. Once you verify you have good power, if it's a rotating piece, rotate it. See if it starts to come back. And then you know what to do. And these pancake motors, I have them linked usually on the videos that require motors. They're also pinned on our Facebook page to Amazon and they're on our website. So you can go to any of those locations to find a link to find the motor. If you want to replace the motor with the link I sent or posted, pinned, etc. Um, and there's two motors I have listed, a high RPM and a low RPM. Um, the high RPM is made for stuff that moves quicker. These have the high RPM motors. The low RPM motors are more for torque. Now, if you want your piece to last longer, meaning that you have it in the display and you're not storing it on its side. Uh, the low RPM will make this spin slower, but it'll be less strain on the motor and it'll last longer, but the ride will not be spinning near as quick. For the lift, the low RPM means it's going to lift a little slower, but the same thing, you're going to get more longevity out of the motor. So I do have both listed, and depending on how much you use your houses, your carnival rides, etc., depends on what you want to put in it. The prices are basically the same. So, uh, also the motors, because everybody asks the question what motors are in these, about 80% of them are 300 CA motors. It's a very common hobby motor. It's also known as a pancake motor. They are used in tons of things from hobby kits to remote control cars, and of course animated houses so it's a very easily found motor sometimes you can find them at hobby stores and you can always find them on ebay and amazon so it might take you a few days to get them because they might come from china or a local distributor of course if it comes from china it takes a little bit longer so but it's just a short video on how to test for a bad motor uh, because i've already repaired these both the ghost around and this roundup as an example, on the channel, I'm not going to disassemble this for you all to watch. I do repair these also without filming them, because uh, you don't need to see the same repair done on 10 different houses. Um, it kind of defeats the purpose. The only time I'd add to it is if this had something different wrong with it, like the LEDs quit working or uh, the speaker broke. I might show you how to reopen it and get to that component. Uh, but other than that, if it's the same thing, which this is a motor, I did the standard turn it on and spin it test. Uh, I won't film the whole process. So, but if you have any questions, uh, comment below, send an email, send a Facebook message, tag us on a comment, etc. We'll do our best to answer, of course. Um, I try to learn a lot about these animated houses. Uh, sometimes it takes me a few days to respond due to work and or I have to look up the question because it might be something I've never seen and I have to do a little research on your specific house. I've worked on hundreds of these, but I haven't worked on all of them and there's thousands of them out there. So I'll do my best to help you and we'll see if we can get your issues resolved. So thanks for watching. Till the next one. All right, here it is with the new motor. See, it's working like it's supposed to. Here's the old motor. It's a 300CA. 
and I replaced it with a different manufacturer. It's a slightly stronger motor than the 300 CA. Um, but I don't know if you can see, I turned the light off to help, but maybe I'll have to turn it back on. I don't know if you can see the sheen. Um, this thing is just covered in grease. And that's the problem with these. So I'm gonna see the grease on the towel. Uh, the grease, now on this, this hole and this hole are the mounting hole, and that's just an auxiliary mounting hole. But the grease gets inside the three holes, it runs down the threads of the screw, that hole, and then around the shaft. That's not a seal, that's just a bushing, it's not uh, liquid proof. So, that's what happens. That's what causes these to fail. So, the motor I put in is one of these, which is like a 300 CA. This one is a 914D. This one is slightly smaller, but the one I put in is a hair taller. And it's got a little bit more torque than the original. Um, so it's just going to make it less likely to burn out as fast, hopefully. Um, and one of the things is this style motor has a raised bushing. I'm not sure if it's going to make a difference, but I figure we'll try it here. Uh, the raised bushing may help prevent oil ingress or grease ingress since it is grease it just gets oily when it gets hot but there you go sound works and if i turn it off it goes back into its reset position and done turn it back on it starts right back over again so if you have something that's moving like i was saying a little earlier uh, most likely it's a bad motor and most likely it's going to be greasy and slimy and full of uh, the grease liquids so um, hopefully this helps you diagnose without disassembly but once you disassemble just get it fixed up all right thanks again for watching till the next one